When people told themselves their past with stories, explained their present with stories, foretold the future with stories, the best place by the fire was kept for the storyteller. Beginning as I do at the beginning, and starting as I must at the start, let me show you fate through the round of this ring. The girl whose finger fits this ring, she'll become queen. The law decrees it. What a lucky girl, you might think. Hmm? Oh, no. A king had three daughters. Two were bad, one was good. Long without a wife, the king's only joy had been the joy of the proud father. But the girls were growing up. Soon there would be suitors. Soon the palace would be empty. I must find myself a wife to comfort me, he thinks. The wedding ring. Passed on from queen to queen, finger to finger, since any could remember. Only when the ring fits can the king marry. to wed our king must come forward and try the ring. The lucky bride will want for nothing. You can't do that. Well, he's too old to be getting married. He ought to be dying shortly. I don't think he's too old. What? What's she whispering all about? No. I know what will happen. Some harpy will step forward and the ring will fit and they'll get married and then he'll die and she'll get everything. That's what will happen. <gasps> The more the sisters sulked at the prospect of a stepmother, the viler they were to sap sorrow their sister. And when their father set off to find his bride, they teased, taunted, and tormented her. They starved her. <laughs> You're too fat, they'd say, stealing from her plate. They vile those sisters. Indeed. But they reckoned without her friends. The creatures who lived in sap sorrow's pockets, under her bed, perched on her chair. When she went to her room, she'd find berries and all kinds of nuts and fruits, delicious things. The ring was a cruel shape. None could wear it. Oh, it's fate. It's not intended. Perhaps. I don't know. You don't need a wife when you've got us. <laughs> don't we love you enough, Daddy? I know, I know. Oh. Where's your sister? Oh, well, who knows? <laughs> Flirting with the guards, stuffing herself. No, next. It's bound to fit someone eventually. How disgusting. And... I mean, we should be queens, actually. Together. I know. I mean, what if the ring were to fit you? Or me? Then what? That's enough! Too late! Too late! Can't you control these women? Get them out of here! Well, he wouldn't want to marry us. But then, he couldn't marry anybody. Which is even better. What do you try? You've got fat fingers. I have not. Ow. 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 It's stuck. Oh. Ow. It's completely stuck. Ow. 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 Well, do something. Well, what? No, the blood's getting stuck. Look, it's so swelling. Oh. 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 Can I help? Help me. No, go away. Go on. Well, oh. Letta, she's better than you at these things. Oh. Everybody all right. What was all the hue and cry? Hue and cry, Daddy. The cry is coming from this room. Um, I heard them. Pick it up. Well, 
then little Sapsorrow does a thing she will long regret. Obediently she bends and oh folly, she stoops and oh rash, she picks up the royal ring and slips it on for safekeeping. What? I know. Where's your mother's ring? Well, she was playing with it, Father. Yes, we didn't want to sneak. I wasn't. She wasn't. Stay out of it, you. Little one. I wasn't. That's not fair. What's that on your finger? Oh, no. Not on your ring finger. It fits. It fits. It fits. No sooner done, no sooner said, the news is a fire in the palace, sweeping the corridors. The ring fits the king's daughter. I cannot marry my father. But you cannot ignore the law. But we cannot ignore the law. You cannot marry your father. But I cannot shame the king. But you cannot marry your father. But the ring... Is the ring... Is the ring... Sire, it is the law of the land. The ring fits your child's finger. You must marry her. Then I should cut off my finger. Why did you play with the ring? Why did you tamper with it? The ceremony, when must it take place? As soon as the preparations allow. Then first find me a dress of the paler silk, the color of the moon. I will not wed till I have it. Very well. We will find this dress. The princess in her woe plans a plan and schemes a scheme. To find such a gown will take time, and meantime, you must all help me. must have one of sparkling silver, like the stars, for my trousseau. Sire, where would we find such a dress? Do as she bids, all in silver, sparkling with stars. And off again went the king's men, scouring the land for such a dress. And all the while, in Sapsorrow's room, Another garment is being made, more marvelous, more magical. Beautiful, beautiful, just like the stars. Sire, the council wait on you. Your people grow impatient. When do you marry? Daughter? This gown is for the wedding feast. The first one for the procession. But now I must have one for the church. Gold it should be. Gold as the sun. Bring me such a dress, and the next day we shall wed. Gold, she says. All gold, like the sun. Bring her such a dress. They shall be married on the morrow. Gold! So oh. And while the tailor's cut cloth spun with pure gold, Sapsorrow stayed shut up in her room. She never appeared. Only her creatures, flying in, slithering out, busy, busy, scurrying about. Princess? Yes? I have here a dress such as none before has seen. Of gold, dazzling. A hundred hands have sewn it. It is what I asked for, very like the sun. Then we must marry on the morrow. We must. We marry on the morrow. get married. Well, the law says they must. And the girl has the three gowns she asked for. No, the ring fits, the feast is prepared, married on the morrow. Listen, bells toll, the streets fill, 
Only Sap Sorrow stays silent in her room. Your Highness, come out. The King awaits you. Yes, it's Sap Sorrow. A strange thing of fur and feathers. For such has been the secret work of the past weeks. This creature. There she is, the ill-fated princess, hurrying away, her past discarded, her future. Who knows? Two years later, a poor creature of fur and feathers tended geese in a king's garden and scrubbed the pots in his kitchen so that's yes, the princess. Princess of slops, yes. Princess of peelings, perhaps. Princess of the kitchen floor, certainly. And one day, this what? princess meets a prince. Where's the cook, do you know? You don't know. Can you speak? Uh, never mind. Give the cook a message, will you? Tonight there's a great ball at the palace. I've seen the menu and want goose added. He knows how I like it. Roast goose with orange, baked in pastry. What's that look? It's a look. If there was a tax on looking, we'd all be beggars. Sire. What's your name? No name. They call me the Straggletag. Well, Miss Straggletag, you don't stare at princes. It's not polite in one so low. Or one so ugly. Why eat geese? They don't harm you. I happen to like geese. So do I. That's why I don't eat them. Pass on my message and take that for your manners. Roast goose with orange. A dozen. That night they sat, the geese. Twelve cold stairs on the royal table, while around them many danced, many daughters wore their mother's pearls. And the prince was there, handsome, admired, separate. Parents looked on and hoped, but the prince stood and smiled and did not dance. Until, late, unannounced, mysterious, a woman enters in a dazzling gown, pale silk like the moon. And what could he do, the prince, but walk towards her? What could he do but lead her to the floor? And they danced. It was meant. As left to right, morning to night, dark to light, they belonged. The music stops. Wait, I don't know your name. Wait! Oh, my dears, the prince is left mystified, excited, tingling. He's hooked, line and sinker. The prince is sent down for clean towels. Where is everybody? Upstairs, they're all busy. Another ball so soon. We've barely recovered from the last one. Oi, thing! You go, then. You sent down for towels? I hope they're clean. I'm sorry. Do I disgust you? <laughs> you amaze me. Look, cats chase mice. Hens lay eggs. And what does that mean? It means some things have to do with other things. I have nothing to do with you. You don't disgust me because I don't think about you. I see. Now, go away. And keep below stairs. And stop gawping! No, we can't see for the feathers, this prince. He can't see for the fur. That night, the second ball, beauties come and beauties go, dances are danced, but the prince stands alone, hoping, staring at the great doors, but nothing, no sign. Then, shh, ah, shh, then a dividing of the room, and there she is, in a dress sparkling with silver, 
like the stars. I must go. Don't, please. I think of nothing but you. I find that hard to believe. It's true, I, I can't sleep. I... Where'd you live that I might find you? I live where hens catch mice and cats lay eggs. What? No one else in the whole palace, in the whole kingdom, speaks to me like this. Are you in love? Is that the problem? You couldn't possibly understand what I'm feeling. Or are you worried you might only love your sweetheart for her beautiful gowns? Were she in the humblest rags? Were she the poorest? Absolutely. But you see, my darling has eyes like... Yes. Oh, they're perfect. A voice like... Mm? Oh, it's perfect. It's not her gowns. Well, how can you possibly understand? Then you should marry her. I want to. I want to, but I can't find her. I see. I... I have a problem like yours. What advice would you give me? Well, I don't know your beau. What's he like? Handsome. Rich. Really? Proud. Ah! <laughs> you see, when I think about him, it makes my head hurt and my tummy ache and my skin tingle and my heart do little somersaults. Me too. Me too. Oh, yes, we're in love. And it's terrible. Oh, I don't think I'm in love. No, you're definitely in love. Little somersaults? Tingling skin? Oh, definitely. Straggle tag! Straggle tag! Where the devil have you I got have to? to? Go. Yes. And listen, don't tell anyone we've spoken. As you wish. It's just, you know, Prince and. Straggle tag! Prince and straggle tag. Oh, yes, the prince is lovesick, all right. Even before it's dark, he's there on the terrace in front of the ballroom. Tonight, he shivers. I'll see my love tonight. She still hasn't come, and this is the last of them. Could I please have the dishes? Ooh, look at this one. What's the hurry? Meeting a sweetheart? That's why the prince is still waiting. She hasn't finished the dishes. <laughs> Proclamation rings out around the palace. The prince will marry the girl who fits the golden slipper. Yeah. <laughs> well, she thinks, what was true of the finger is true of the foot. She was cursed by the ring. Can she be blessed with the slipper? There's a queue now, but it fits nobody. I might try. You never know. You, you've got feet like a Yorkshire pudding. I have not. And what about our little beauty? Are you going to try? I might. Ah. So up she goes. Really? And blow <laughs> me, who's trying hey, on the royal slipper? Me. I'm more I think if I just, if I just, if I, uh, I've done it. I've done it. It fits. <laughs> 
That's absurd. The Fritz! You're not the one. I am? The Fritz, look! I claim this handsome prince for my husband. <laughs> According to the proclamation, the prince must marry the woman who can wear the golden slipper. Princess Bad Sister. Princess Bad Sister! From? From far away. From far away! Daughter of? Of nobody. We have no parents, you see. Mummy died a long time ago and Daddy died last year. Well, he was ancient. Princess Bad Sister of far away, daughter of nobody. She will marry the prince on the morrow. Now, can I just take the silly shoe off, please? Why? Well, it doesn't match. And it's the teensy-weensy bit tight. Just a pinch. Ouchie, wowchie. In fact, I think I may just have to have a tiny baby scream. <laughs> Sister, do you think you could possibly help me to take this lovely slipper off my footsie-wootsie? Because I'm going to have to scream very loudly shortly. I think my leg is turning a little bit on the maroon side. It is. <laughs> Get this show out of my foot! <laughs> Sire, I claim my right to try the slipper. Ladies, darling, I think, not creatures. What is it? Oh. Get it out of it. Get rid of it. It's called straggle tag. So, may I? Very well. <laughs> It does fit. Will you keep your promise? Oh, don't be ridiculous. You can't. You've got to marry that thing. Yes. I'll marry you. I'll keep my promise. And what the prince didn't know, he very soon did. They talked and talked, explaining this and explaining that, stories of rings, stories of fur and feathers. And they wept for her dear father, smiled for poor Straggletag, forgave the bad sisters, danced for a day without going away. And, and, well, after that, they were so out of breath, they lay down and slept. And glory be, if I don't wake them soon, they'll never get wed. <laughs> <laughs>